Hello, this is Josh Knox. I am a senior technical marketing architect for Carbon Black, and today I am very excited to be sharing with you the launch of Carbon Black Containers Cloud Native Detect and Response. Now, uh, you may be wondering, what does that mean, Cloud Native Detect and Response? Well, uh, it is the next uh, layer or generation or level of whatever you want to call the, of our EDR, our Endpoint Detect and Response, and our XDR, Extended Detect and Response. For containers, now we have Cloud Native Detect and Response. So allow me to explain. So this screen that we're looking at right now, um, you can see here, this is our current uh, Carbon Black container solution. And you can see here that the way the current Carbon Black container solution works is that we tie in to the Kubernetes API, and this allows us to be able to have hardening policies, uh, network policies, runtime policies that interact directly with the Kubernetes API. And then we have uh, scanning. Uh, you see over here, we have the, the scanning that we do continuously in the cluster. You can scan in your pipelines. We have policy enforcement. We've got network monitoring, etc. cetera. So uh, we already have a, a great tool to be able to uh, monitor your Kubernetes, to be able to protect your Kubernetes, to be able to, to enforce policies in your Kubernetes, etc. So now we are adding in cloud native detect and response. And the big thing with this is that we are now incorporating Carbon Black's Linux sensor into Carbon Black containers. Now, this is how this will work. The Linux sensor will be installed into each node in your Kubernetes clusters. And the way we install the Linux sensor, as you can see here from the diagram, is we install the Linux sensor in a container. So we are installing it as part of the Carbon Black container uh, workload that is put into your cluster. So what that means is we're deploying it in a cloud native way. And that means that you can incorporate it into your existing automation processes for how you already deploy your Kubernetes clusters. Now this, this uh, is also exciting because it, it means that uh, you are not installing the Linux sensor individually into a node. That's not how this works. The Linux sensor gets automatically deployed as a daemon set across your nodes. So once you have deployed Carbon Black containers with Cloud Native Detect and Response, each one of your nodes will show up as devices in the Carbon Black Cloud. You don't have to do anything special. You just deploy to the cluster. If you have three nodes, then that daemon set will install it on all three nodes. If you have five nodes, then the daemon set will install it across all five nodes. And those nodes will show up, as I said, in the inventory as devices. And we'll look at that here in a moment in the Carbon Black Cloud. So now let's look at the added visibility that the new Linux sensor gives us. Scroll down here. All right. So once we have this Linux sensor installed into our clusters, now we are able to see uh, all the way down to the OS level. So this Linux sensor is looking at the, uh, the OS level, which in this case, in this diagram is in Ubuntu 20. We're able to see in the container engine. It doesn't matter if it's Docker or container D. Uh, it's going to be able to have visibility into the container engine itself that spawns the containers. And so therefore, you can see here, I have an error, uh, an arrow into the example workload because now we have visibility into the processes of the containers themselves. And this is huge. Now we can do process monitoring on the containers. We can have watch list alerts. We can see uh, the actual commands that are being run inside a container. So this is very exciting. Now, let's go ahead now and we'll hop over to the console and we'll start to look at some of this. Okay, so here we are in the Carbon Black Cloud. I am under Inventory, Kubernetes, Clusters, and the UI has changed here a little bit and we can see our clusters on this side. We're focusing on this dev cluster right now. 
And now if I click on AWS, because I have my cluster deployed as a Kube ADM cluster running on EC2 instances. So if I click on AWS over here, uh, you can see here are my nodes. There is a dev one node, there's prod, prod one, worker one, uh, test worker two, there they are. You can just keep going down and seeing those. And this is this is awesome. Now I have deployed the Linux sensor to my cluster. I didn't have to do anything uh, extra. I just deployed Carbon Black Container to the cluster and I automatically get each of those nodes in here as devices and I am getting the same telemetry that I would get from any other Linux machine that I would install the Carbon Black Linux sensor on. But now I get it as a cloud native deployment when I deploy Carbon Black containers to my clusters. So let's look at some alerting here. Let's, let's have some fun. So first I'm gonna actually go ahead and show you what I did to be able to trigger the alerts we're about to see. So uh, I'm going to open up here. I have a vulnerable web app running in my cluster and it is just this little ping your servers uh, app right here. And if we just do what it says first and we just ping 8.8.8, .8 that is Google's DNS server. And there it is, it, it pings it. Now I'm gonna be a hacker and I'm going to put a semicolon which will end the command. And you can see I've done this a few times already. We're gonna cat Etsy password. That's a file inside of Linux that is sensitive that you don't want to get out. And there it is, we have remote code execution and we are getting the contents of the Etsy password file. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump all the way to a reverse shell. And over here, this is a Kali box and for hacking. And I, have, I am going to run my reverse shell. And there we go. I got the shell over here. I'm going to run a few commands. Uh, first of all, this shell is a, is a junky little shell. So I, wanna, I want a good bash shell. So I do that. And now I can see that I am in the health check deployment pod. And for those of you that are used to Kubernetes, you will immediately recognize this, this little UUID that uh, Kubernetes sticks on pods. It becomes very obvious quickly that I have dropped uh, into a pod. I'm gonna run a little command here that's gonna help me to see what's available inside this pod. Now remember, this is just a little vulnerable pod that I put up just to be able to do these demos. It has way too many things in it that should not be here, including one of my favorites, which is curl, because that allows me to reach out and download things from the internet. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to curl and reach out and get a recon script that's just freely available on GitHub. And this recon script is called DeepSea. It's a, a Docker enumeration. Um, container escape. It's just here to help me figure out what bad things I can do in this container. And this is going to run all kinds of different checks. It's very noisy. Uh, real hackers probably aren't going to use this because it is pretty, pretty noisy, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to be loud right now. So we're going to copy another one. I'm going to run this other one. This is the Linux smart enumerator and it's going to do the same thing and run some recon. All right. So that's all we need to do. We've, we've, we've broken into a pod, we've gotten in it and made some noise and kicked around and ran a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of things against it. And let's go back to the console and see it with, if we can see anything. All right, so let's go over here to alerts. All right, going to refresh my alert page. And the first one we're going to look at now, one of the other uh, attacks that I ran was a crypto miner. You can see here hacking via coin mining. So this is another automated attack that I have running on this system. And so uh, the crypto miner that I have running in my Kubernetes cluster, it has been detected. And if I click on this process analysis button, it's gonna take us to the process tree and remember, these are processes that we are seeing inside the container. So this is running in a container uh, in our Kubernetes cluster. And I can see the command. This is the command that is being run inside the container. Uh, it's, it's running XM rig. It's, it's mining Monero coin. This is, there's where it's reaching out to. That's a proxy I have set up and a wallet uh, right there. So it's trying to, to reach out 
and do some mining and Carbon Black immediately detected it. Very cool, catching the processes inside the containers. Now let's go over here and we'll look at, here is the, the uh, reverse shell that I just ran uh, a moment ago that you watched me run. So let's click on that. And now we see here, uh, if we look, we can see this is that Python command that I ran. We can see that this is on test one, worker one. Uh, the, that's the device it's coming from. So we're gonna click backwards here. And if I click on this guy, and here we see our reverse shell. Here is the reverse shell that I ran from that ping your server site. So we see the reverse shell has been initiated. And if we can we go backwards anymore? Let's go backwards a little bit. So we go back here and yes, sure enough, we were in the health check pod and there it is. We're able to see that there is that health check pod um, that we were inside of. Now, if we go back, all right, it's just the health check pod. And here is, again, there is the reverse shell that we ran. And now here is the Python that I ran to get a good bash shell. And there is that exact command that I ran. It is so nice. We're able to see the exact commands that were run inside that container. And we're able to do the investigation that we need to do. If I click on this one, now we're going to be able to see the curls that I ran for the recon. Yep, look, there they are. And if I click on one of these, we should be able to even see, yep, there are uh, the curl commands that I was running. So this is awesome. Uh, we are able to see the processes inside the containers. We know what devices it came from. We are able to do investigation. Uh, we're able to see the network connections uh, that are established. If I go back to this XM rig down here, uh, we can see that here are the, it, it made, um, it did a DNS lookup. Um, it established over port 333 to the proxy. Um, and it was also reaching out to support xmrig.com. Cloud native detect and response. Uh, this is a, is a game changer. And again, this gives us brand new visibility. And we are now able to bring uh, the, the EDR capability of being able to get all the telemetry from a Linux node and from the processes of the containers themselves. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.